Hi, I'm Paul DiGiuseppe. Many of you may remember me as the former manager of service training with Max Worldwide, the Mobile Air Conditioning Society. We're here today to bring you a program from Honeywell concerning why R1234YF, why are vehicle manufacturers switching to R1234YF for use in vehicle AC systems? This is number one in a series of three programs. Program number two is gonna discuss the differences between R1234YF and R134A systems. And program number three is gonna discuss servicing R1234YF systems. Why are vehicle manufacturers switching over to R1234YF? A few different reasons, environmental protection and satisfaction of regulations. We're also gonna discuss why R1234YF was overwhelmingly chosen as the refrigerant to replace R134A. Let's first talk about the definition of global warming potential. And here is the definition from Wikipedia. Global warming potential is a relative measure of how much heat a greenhouse gas traps in the atmosphere. It compares the amount of heat trapped by a certain mass of the gas in question to the amount of heat trapped by a similar mass of carbon dioxide. So of course, R12 was the refrigerant that was used in vehicle AC systems going back to the beginning of vehicle AC systems. And we know that R12 was replaced with R134A because of its ozone depletion, but R12 also has a very high GWP, R134A, while it doesn't deplete the ozone layer, does have a high GWP. While the next generation refrigerants that the vehicle manufacturers are using, specifically R1234YF, has a low GWP and also no ozone depletion, so it's an ideal refrigerant for the vehicle manufacturers to switch to. This chart gives further illustration of that, and the chart also takes into consideration atmospheric lifetime. Starting off with R1234YF, and you'll notice that the chart calls it out as HFO1234YF. Well, HFO stands for hydrofluoroolefin, and we can draw a comparison of that to when we've seen R134A discussed that it's HFC, hydrofluorocarbon, but we know in the automotive service community that we usually refer to refrigerants by their R designation, so from here on, that's what we're gonna do. So let's take a look at R1234YF, very short atmospheric lifetime, only about 10 days. If it was released to the atmosphere, it would only remain in the atmosphere, hang around the atmosphere for about 10 days. And as you can see on the chart, has a global warming number of less than one. Now let's compare that to R134A, which hangs around the atmosphere, if it was released, hangs around the atmosphere for about 13 years and has a global warming number of 1,300. Let's take a look at carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, CO2, has a global warming potential of one. It is the greenhouse gas that all others are benchmarked against, has a global warming number of one. And you can see, once again, R1234YF less than one. CO2 remains in the atmosphere for anywhere from five to 200 years. So it hangs around for a long time. So basically what it comes down to is that R1234YF is actually more beneficial to the environment than R134A, and uh, also in, in some aspects is more environmentally beneficial than CO2. Let's talk about the switch. Since it was known that R134A, while it didn't deplete the ozone layer, did have a relatively high GWP, the automotive industry began to look for a refrigerant to replace it as far back as 2001. And about seven years later, in 2008, the Society of Automotive Engineers Cooperative Research Program concluded that R1234YF would be a refrigerant that could be safely used and beneficially used to replace R134A. Now, at this particular point in time, must car makers replace R134A with 1234YF or any other refrigerant for that matter? Well, the answer to that is no. However, the EPA has published a ruling that states starting with model year 2021, vehicles sold in the United States must use a refrigerant that has a low global warming potential. Even though it's not currently mandated, many vehicle manufacturers are switching to use R1234YF because the EPA is giving them emission credits 
for its use. Now, for those emission credits, the EPA isn't requiring the use of any particular refrigerant as long as the refrigerant used meets the requirements that they have outlined concerning low GWP. At the same time, vehicles registered in any European Union country starting in 2017 must use a low GWP refrigerant, one that has a GWP of less than 150, and R1234YF is the refrigerant that has overwhelmingly been chosen. Currently, there are more than 10 million vehicles on the road using R1234YF, and it's projected that very shortly, there will be more than 40 million vehicles using the new refrigerant. Let's sum things up. Why 1234YF? Because of its low global warming potential, because of its short atmospheric lifetime, because of its overall safety, because it was an easy transition for the vehicle manufacturers to make because the systems are very similar, design and operation and cooling performance to R134A systems. And lastly, for you as a service technician, you're going to find that working on an R1234YF system is very similar to working on an R134A system. System operating pressures, component operating temperatures, and equipment usage are very, very similar. As we mentioned previously, this is one part in a three-part program presented by Honeywell. There are some additional resources that you can take advantage of, as well as Honeywell's smartphone app that brings you more information about their refrigerants. I'm Paul DiGiuseppe. Thanks for watching this program on R1234YF Systems.